What is the area of a circle? And how do you find it? You're probably told to memorize the formula area equals pi r squared, and although you accepted this as truth, you didn't believe that this formula was grammatically correct, and you certainly had no idea why it worked to give you the area of a circle. If you were fortunate, you had the opportunity to investigate the relationship between the circumference of a circle and its diameter, and for lots of different circles. If you did this right, you discovered that for any circle, for any circle, the ratio of the circumference to the diameter is a constant, and it's a little bit bigger than 3, and we call it pi. Now you can write this relationship as an equation, pi equals c divided by d, where c is the circumference and d is the diameter of the circle. You can rearrange this equation so that, given the diameter of a circle, you can find its circumference. So c equals pi times d. Another way to write this, since half the diameter is the radius, is c equals pi times 2r, or c equals 2 pi r. This is probably the way you're used to seeing the formula for the circumference of a circle. Let's get back to the area. The area of an object, as you probably recall, is the amount of two-dimensional space that object takes up. We have lots of formulas for lots of different shapes, such as rectangles, triangles, parallelograms, trapezoids, and many others. And all of these formulas can be shown to make sense. But the formula for an area of a circle is very different because it involves pi. If we could squeeze the circle to look like some other shape that we did know the area of, we could try to relate that formula to the one we memorized for the circle. So that's our strategy. Change the way the circle looks without changing the amount of the circle we have. So there are lots of ways we could do this. I'm going to cut the circle into halves and see how it goes. So cutting the circle into two pieces didn't give anything close to a shape that we know the area of. So let's try cutting the circle into more pieces. This time let's try four. Can we rearrange the pieces into some shape that we know the area of? So that's not really that helpful. So let's try eight. Again, can we rearrange the pieces into some shape that we know the area of? So that's better. It sort of looks like a parallelogram, but not quite. So let's try 16 pieces. Again, can we rearrange the pieces into some shape that we know the area of? Okay, so the rearrangement of 16 pieces looks quite a bit more like a parallelogram, but I think we can do a little better. Let's try 32 pieces. Notice that, with the circle cut into 32 pieces, we can rearrange the pieces to form a shape that's pretty close to a rectangle. Also recall what the rearranged shapes looked like with less than 32 pieces, like with 4, with 8, with 16, and then with 32. Notice that the greater number of pieces we cut the circle into, the more uh, like a rectangle the rearrangement appears. Imagine continuing this process of cutting the circle into more and more pieces and rearranging them to look like a rectangle. Imagine how close to a rectangle the rearrangement of the circle would look if we cut the circle into a thousand pieces or a million pieces. What changes about each new shape is how much it resembles a rectangle. What does not change are the length and width of the rectangle. The width is always half the circumference, or pi times r. The length is always the radius of the original circle, or r. Wait, let's look at why that is. Recall how each rearrangement was put together. Uh, now let's look at closer at the building blocks for those rearrangements. So here we have four of the building blocks, 1 4th, 1 8th, 1 16th, and 1 32nd 
of the original circle. As you can see, the height of each of these building blocks is the same, and that height is the radius of our circle. So really, we can just look at the rearrangements that we're starting to look like a rectangle. So first let's look at the rearrangement that uses 16 pieces. The way they were put together was one facing up and one facing down, one facing up, one facing down, and so forth, until all 16 were put together. So in this rearrangement, there are eight facing up and eight facing down. If we pull the ones facing up apart from the ones facing down, we can see that the height of the rectangle, or the length, is the length of one of the pieces. Again, that's just the radius of the original circle. So the height of the rectangle is r. This is the same regardless of how many pieces we've cut the circle into. Also, we can see that the base, or width, of our rectangle is made up of the sum of the widths of half of the pieces, in this case, 8. Because the sum of the width widths of all of the pieces is the full circumference of the circle, then half of the pieces gives us half of the circumference. So the width of our rectangle is half the circumference, or pi r. This is the same, again, regardless of how many pieces we've cut the circle into. Now remember what the area was for a rectangle. So the area of our rectangle is r times pi r, or pi r squared. So that's one explanation of why the area of a circle is pi r squared.